We've got our basic particle system animation working. As I press play, you can see that our particles are spreading out from the emitter. Let's select those particles and go into their attributes so that we can fine tune the look and the behavior. In the channel box, you'll see that there are many attributes listed here. Not all of them, but some of the most commonly needed ones. If you scroll down in that particle shape node, you'll find particle render type, and you can choose between different types of particles. So for example, I could choose spheres, and that would make them larger and easier to see. I'm now going to go back into the emitter attributes and fine tune the speed so that I can have those particles sort of hang in the viewport a little bit better. So with the particles selected, I'll choose Control A to launch the attribute editor. And I'm going to the emitter node. And down in the emitter node, once again, remember, we have the speed. Let's try a value of zero so that you can see the effect. Rewind and play back. So with no speed, they're born at a certain location and they'll stay there forever. So we want them to spread out a little bit, so I'll give it a speed of maybe one. Rewind, play back. Just increase that a little bit more. Let's try a value of two and a random factor. Whenever you see a random factor with particles, it's a plus or minus factor. So if I give speed random a value of 1, then any one particle will have a speed somewhere in the range of 2 plus or minus 1, or 1 to 3. Press Enter. And now some of them are moving at different speeds than others, so they're drifting out slightly. To add gravity, once again, I'll have the particles selected, and I'll want to go to the Dynamics menu set and choose Fields, Gravity. The position and orientation of the gravity field doesn't affect the particles. The only thing that matters is the gravity field strength. That's called the magnitude. You'll see it here in the Attribute Editor or in the channel box, Magnitude. And that's 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm creating fairy dust here, so I get to adjust the value of gravity to whatever feels right in my viewport. So I can increase that maybe to 25. Rewind and play back. And now my particles are falling a little bit faster. Excellent. Next, I want those particles to collide with the ground plane. Press that 5 key so you can see it. Particles are falling through the ground plane. It's very easy to make them collide. All you have to do is select the particles, select the collision object, go to Dynamics, Particles, Make Collide. Rewind and play back. And it's simple as that. To adjust the bounciness and friction, select the ground plane or other collision object. Go into the channel box. At the bottom, you will see an output node labeled GeoConnector. Open that up, and within there, you will see resilience, which is the bounciness, and friction. So if I give this a resilience or bounciness of 0.2, rewind, and now we'll see those particles sort of just land. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because it's the particles in motion in the air that I'm most concerned with, but you can have a lot of fun and play around with this to get different effects. Currently, our particles live forever, and what I'd like to have happen is for them to fade out over time. So to accomplish that, I want to give them a lifespan so that they'll disappear after a certain period of time. I'm going to select those particles, go back to the attribute editor, control A, and in the particle shape node, I'll scroll down and you'll see Lifespan Attributes. And instead of Live Forever, I'll choose Random Range and give that a value of maybe 1.5 seconds plus or minus 0.5 seconds. And now the particles will live long enough to touch the ground, but then they'll wink out of existence. Maybe I'll give it 2 seconds plus or minus 0.5.
to give them a chance to land and settle. This also helps with the efficiency of our scene because we're not building up more and more particles with each frame. Eventually it reaches a saturation point and your particle count overall will level out. By the way, you can see your particle count. It's just here in the attribute editor. So if I play that through and then pause it, you'll see we've got a certain number of particles on that frame. Cool, so we've played around with gravity and collisions. And next, I think we're going to change the particle type. Currently, we're using spheres, and that's easy to see in our viewport. But I'd like to scroll down and in the attribute editor, go into the render attributes and choose a different type and add some attributes for that current type. Okay, so instead of spheres, let's take a look at this. We've got a little catalog of different render types. All of these that do not have anything after them are hardware rendered particles. That means they are designed to be used in conjunction with the Maya hardware renderer or the hardware render buffer. The ones that say SW after them are for software renderers. In our case, we want to render in Maya software because later we're going to apply some glow inside of Maya itself. To get that capability, we'll need to use the software renderer. And the one that I want to go for here is called Cloud. And now you can see we're getting little fuzzy circles instead of hard circles for the spheres. And additionally, I want to click the Add Attributes for Current Render Type button. And depending upon what you've chosen up here in the particle render type, different attributes will be added when you click this button. Once I've done that, now I've got an overall radius for these particles. This is what's known as a per object attribute. All of the particles share the same radius. Later, we'll add a per particle attribute in which each particle can have a different radius. Now I'll save my scene, file save scene as to particles103.ma.